Hey, what's up guys? Thanks for watching another one of my videos. I just wanted to share a little product that I've been working on. I managed to make it work and I managed to put it off. So let me show you real quick. This is a dressing room for a hair salon as you can see. So the problem that we're having here is that the switch is right behind this door over here. So in order for people to turn on the switch, they needed to walk into the dressing room, close the door, be in the dark and, you know, manage to find the switch. So it was getting annoying to the owner and to the clients that the switch was behind the door. And I decided to come up with this idea of putting a sensor right above the door so the lights will turn on and off automatically. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, you know, it's stupid. How come you didn't buy one of those uh, switches that has the, the sensor built in? But guess what? I did and it didn't work. Now, this one was the first one that I bought and this one seemed to work the best. But of course, I made the, the mistake of just walking into the store and I didn't pay attention or read the packaging. I just saw that he had the motion sensor and the switch and I was like, all right, you know what? This is exactly what I need, but it wasn't exactly what I needed. So if you're thinking of getting some of these switches, I'm just going to give you a couple of tips. So apparently there's three different switches. The first one is a vacancy sensing switch. What that means is that when the room is vacant, the the lights are going to turn off, but it will not turn on by itself. Though you always have to press this button over here. Now the second one is an occupancy switch. So what that means is that as soon as you walk into the room, the light's going to turn on, but it will not turn off by itself though. So you have to press this button in order for you to turn off the light. So that pretty much defeated the purpose of me putting one behind the door. Because you always have to rely on this stupid button to turn it on or turn it off depending on the, on, on the switch that you get. So another thing is that when you open the door, it blocks the sensor, so it's pointless. Now, let me show you a few of the settings that the switch comes with, but first uh, you got to remove this lid and just push it in inwards and you should be able to pop it out. So the first one is the sensitivity on the sensor and the second one is the time. Now I'm going to give you a quick tip. I had, a, I had this problem. So if you're installing the switch, you have to mount it into the wall and plug it in and leave it in there for five minutes because for some reason it has to calibrate and it takes a while for do that so you got to leave it in there for five minutes so when that one didn't work i went back into the store and that's when i noticed that there were three different switches so this one's just a vacancy switch and then you got this one that is a vacancy and occupancy switch and the other one that i'm missing is just the occupancy switch which turns on the the light as soon as you're walking into the room so going back into the switch, this one does pretty much both of them. It turns on and turns off the light automatically, and that's exactly what I was looking for. Now the downside to the switch though is that it's a infrared sensing switch. So in order for it to turn on, it needs to detect heat. And when you open the door, it blocks the heat from the person and that it doesn't tell you on the packaging. Another thing that it doesn't tell you is that it's not compatible with these kind of light bulbs neither with these uh, fluorescent lights so if you want to install e either one of these switches it's not going to work at all with fluorescent light it's not even going to turn on now all of these switches have a built-in dimmer so you can use this light bulb that i have here but it has to be dimmable or you can use the old school but they also have to be dimmable if you use regular light bulbs it's going to flicker a whole lot like shown on the top right corner but it's really annoying, especially in the room this size, you know, it's really small and you feel like the power is going to go off any minute. So that's something you might want to keep in mind. Alright, so let me show you what I did. So I purchased the sensor and it cost me about $21 and some change. Now the sensor belongs or it comes with those light sets that you put in front of your house or right above your garage. That soon as somebody walks by, it turns on. Now another thing that I purchased is that electrical box and that one cost me about $1.46 and the lid cost me about 20 something cents. Now all together I ended up spending about $25 and let me show you a few of the settings that this sensor has and they're all pretty much standard. The first one's the sensitivity on the sensor, you know you can have it higher, you can have it low. Another one is the hours that you wanted to function but keep in mind this is an outdoor door sensor so that really doesn't matter and another one is the time that you want it on for and that's one of the reasons that I put a electrical tape on that sensor because it's an outdoor so the light used to reflect off the wall since it's wide and the sensor used to think that it was daylight so therefore it wouldn't turn on so that's something you might want to keep in mind if you want to use it for the indoor put some tape 
Now, what I really wanted to do is, uh, I wanted to run the cables through the inside of the drywall, but I ran into a lot of problems. There's a second story above us, uh, there's uh, some drainage pipes, and I really didn't have a space to work on. Now, I know you're wondering why the sensor is sitting the way it is instead of sitting upright, but, you know, I'll, I'll see if I can give you a quick explanation of why the sensor is sitting the way it's supposed to instead of sitting upright. And um, I'll see if I can add a link to a video that, you know, explains in more detail all how the sensor works. Just so you can get an idea, there's those two bars there, and apparently there's more inside going the same way. And in order for these to activate, you need to go across those bars. And that's one of the reasons why I have it like that and not upright as it should be, because as soon as people walk in, they are going across those lines. And when I had it upright, they were just going the same way that the lines are going so the lights wouldn't wouldn't even turn on so these ways seem to work the best now going back to the switch this switch is a little more complicated to install and it might not work on some of your existing um switches and in order for you to install this one you need a neutral source and let me show you what i mean by that so this is a perfect example of how these switch might not work on some of your existing switches um as you can see these switch has a whole bunch of cables and the main cable it's this white one which is the neutral source and this switch over here i only got two cables one that it's bringing the electricity into the switch and then it's sending the electricity back to the to the light fixture so there's no way that i'm gonna be able to install this switch because i need the <clears throat> i need the the neutral source I could install this one and this one, you know, it's just fine because that's all you need. You need the electricity coming in, uh, electricity going out, and then you get the ground wire. So let me remove the light fixture so I can show you what I do with the wires. Uh, so you get the black wire that's bringing the the power into the to the light fixture and then you get the, the white wire, which is the neutral. So just pretty much match all the colors. The black goes to the black. Then you got another extra cable coming from the light switch that is bringing back the power into the light fixture. And then the white one, you just connect it to the white one. Now, this is one advantage of getting an uh, infrared sensor. Uh, I'm standing right in front of the mirror and it does not reflect any heat off the mirror. So, you know, I can be standing right in front of it. I can move across it and it's not going to trigger the, the sensor unless if you walk in. Alright, so I'm all done here. I put everything back where it belongs and this project ended up costing me about a little over $23. Uh, much cheaper than those fancy sensors that are really complicated to install. And for some reason, this one seems to be a little more energy efficient. After a minute that it doesn't take any heat, it turns off by itself. You don't have to worry about anything. Alright, so once again, that's the switch. And let me zoom out so you guys can see that there's no other switches on these walls. And to prove that, let me turn off the, the power on the switch so you guys can see that the light turns off. <clears throat> there you go. Now, like I said before, you know, if you got the the basic knowledge on electricity, I'm pretty sure you can pull this off. I'm not an electrician, so you're at your own risk. Don't come back to me and tell me, hey, you know what, I almost killed myself. You're on your own. So be safe, and once again, thanks for watching.